Oh no. I think we lost one. Uh oh. Maybe he got unrendered somewhere. Oh, there he is. Look at him. Look at him go. There you are. Oh, I gotta take off my armor before I die. They work pretty hard, but they're kinda They're kinda dumb. They go for the same stuff. I feel like that's I feel like that kinda defeats the purpose of their like functionality. Like if one guy's going for something, then the other one should go for something else, right? Wouldn't that make sense? Either way, they, they work pretty well. I've been sitting up there for about, well, I was sitting up there for about 20 minutes and I got three stacks or so. That was pretty cool. It uh, uses the guardians to kill the uh, squids that spawn, but you have to be all the way up there at the top of this thing because the uh, guardians and squids don't spawn if you're super close. How it works is these little guys, uh, once the guardians kill the squid these guys go out and search for the ink sacks and then they come over here this is the beehive but for LA's. they they're this is their home the note block so how it works is there is uh, a red or an observer clock that's just constantly going back and forth turning this little note black on, note block on and then there's hoppers all around it so that when these guys come up here to drop the items off at the note block it picks it up and it goes into here and they do a pretty good job for the most part it looks like they throw stuff underneath and then they get confused. I can't even see where this, they're looking for something. Oh, there it is. So it'll pick it up eventually. It'll go up top and <laughs> they're not very smart. <laughs> so <laughs> it works really well, except for when it doesn't. So I'm gonna pick this up because I they're struggling. So it works really well, honestly. And the cool thing is um, if I block this guardian farm off with glass, the iron maiden farm, the iron Golem and Guardian Farm up there work simultaneously. So if we head up top, um, oh, that <laughs> that sounded crazy. Um, so yeah, this works uh, at the same time. If I stand right here, it's not as efficient because um, the Guardians are spawning here and not specifically right there. But it still works. It looks like it's spawning more Iron Golems than Guardians are falling in. We're not rendering the guardi the Guardians, but we still might be able to see them fall in any second now. Oh, there they go. So, yeah. I think I'm going to have to probably, if I'm up here, I can probably turn off one of the Iron Golem farms so that there's not a huge abundance of <laughs> Iron Golems. Or I can maybe figure out a way to maybe kill them both at the same time. It defeats the purpose of the whole farm, but it looks like I'm getting a, a pretty large amount of Iron Golems spawning in there. But that works at the same time. And what happened was the reason I had to block this uh, little thing off or the outside area off was because of um, these LA's were coming over here to get squid ink and they'd go in and then to go up there and then they'd like unrender and just like stay stuck up there. And uh, when I actually came over here the first time, I think they drowned. And so uh, you can see here that I put like a whole column of stuff underneath this because the ink sacks were getting stuck under here or the and the LA's would try to get it and they would drown or not they, there was one a lay left, but I think the other one drowned right there, and I think it, um, oh, did I lose another one? I only see one, but there should be two, somewhere, I hear him, are you around? There you are. Whew, I'm like anxious now, because it, it really was so hard to get all these guys over here, but what you do is you take a jukebox, and you play a song, and you give them amethyst, and you duplicate it, and so I have a, a spare one up here, just in case those two go missing, um, He's in a box. It's probably not the most ethical thing, but it uh, <laughs> it's safe. And I know for a fact that it won't go anywhere if I stay over here. Ooh, that's loud. So the whole reason for this is now that I have, you know, I'm gonna go grab some. Now that I have ink sack, I can make dark prismarine, which we're actually gonna use later today in a build. So I need a lot of it. I'm hoping that this will be enough ink sacks. I, oh, I'm out of space. I don't need to fish. So I need a, uh, I need Dark Prismarine and I didn't have any way of getting squid ink very well, uh, or efficiently. So now, I'm gonna turn my sounds off just for a second. I can finally take all this stuff and uh, make some Dark Prismarine because we're gonna use it in our concrete mud farm that we're gonna build later today uh, over by the gunpowder. Why did I do all that just to put it all back? Does this only give me one for one? Oh, really? That sucks. <laughs> I was really hoping it'd be like a... Wow, getting black dye is incredibly difficult. But I need all of this. I don't know exactly how much I need. I need a lot, that's all I know. But I have plenty of <laughs> prismarine shards, so I'm not really worried about that. Oh, cool, so 
I got quite a bit. I think I could um, probably use a little bit more for the, the factory today, but this will probably be enough to get a good start on it. I have most of this uh, materials already ready to go. So if I find one that's empty, let's try this one. Oh, I don't have enough room. Uh, uh oh. Let's see. Do I have, I might have an extra shulker box in here. I do. I'll use these two for the roof. But yeah, like I was saying, we do have um, pretty much everything ready to go in these shulker boxes. This is the redstone stuff, and then this is the, the build. And I actually really like the, the new little factory I made. Uh oh, I have to go through there to get back home. This is the time. Go, go, go. Don't die. Oh, there's, they're dying up here. That's not a good sign. I wonder why. Are they dying in here? Oh. I'm scared. I have to be so fast. Okay. I hate this. I need to find a better way to get out of this uh, area. I really do like the new uh, factory I made. I I liked the old one with the, uh, the gunpowder farm, but there was just, it seems too dull to me. And I'm not really sure. Uh, I still can't figure out why. I think it might just be um, the same use of the same color rather than throwing in some mixed color. I'll kind of explain when we get over here. Uh, yeah, so I, like, I, I love it, but there's just, it's, it's too plain, I think. I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. Maybe it's the use of just, like, two colors, uh, just the red and the gray, because that's all I used. So, I changed it up a little bit for the new factory. Um, this is staying. I'm going to put the new factory over here, like, right in this area. And it's a little smaller. It doesn't need to be too big. Um, and then I'll clear out this area, and we'll make... Uh, a little drying area for the mud right now. I don't really know any other way to dry mud other than, or dry, wait, yeah, dry mud other than just to let it sit out. Uh, I think that's kind of the only way. So this whole area will kind of be a, um, like a working area, I guess. But the factory, the second factory will be over here. That way it'll add just a little bit more reason for there being a gigantic factory in the middle of the woods. Um, if we have another one sitting here, It'll be kind of like a, like an industrial kind of district type thing. But I think you guys will really like the new way I built this one, or at least I hope so, because I really like it. The color scheme that I chose was um, a little different than how I normally build. I try to add a lot of color, but also I'm, I'm working on learning how to match colors better. So I'm hoping that you guys enjoy it, because if so, that means I'm on the right track to... Uh, doing better with my color shading matching color matching shading. I don't know the proper way to say it I think we're gonna work on the factory First and then we'll do the redstone together um, That way the interior will be open and ready for us to to start building uh, Together because I want to explain how it works because it's a new It's a new concept for me. I'm working with uh, like zero tick piston feed tapes and all that kind of stuff so I've learned a lot for game ticks. I'm still not very good at, I probably won't be very good at explaining it, but I want to try. So that's why I want to build it together. Um, and I know that there's a lot better ways to build a concrete farm and a mud farm, but the way that this works is they both use water. So I thought it'd be a really cool way to, to combine the two. Rather than having two different systems, I could combine the two and I wouldn't have to, I could just do both at the same time. And the cool thing is I can choose. If I want to do mud and concrete, I can do mud and concrete. If I want to do mud, I can just do the mud farm, and if I want to do concrete, I could just do the concrete farm. But they're still all together. I thought it was a pretty cool design. Um, it took a long time to get the redstone working just right, because I apparently don't understand anything about game ticks, and uh, that's kind of what I want to talk about when we're working on it together. So I have to clear out this entire forest, and then maybe even uh, take out some of this mountain, and then I think we'll start the whole building process, because... I'm excited to get this thing in the in the world. Um, it's going to be pretty cool.
the factory is all built and I'm going to show you kind of a, a reveal if I run this way that I'd hop on the horse since we never use this guy and he's been tied up to the fence post for so long. So, uh, <laughs> it's kind of blocked off right now. I think I'm going to tear out this whole terrain, not this whole mountain, but right here, this little chunk of terrain. I'm going to tear it out so that we can get a better view and, oh, I just realized I never put any lanterns or anything. I hope mobs don't spawn while we're out here, but uh, yeah, so this is the little, the factory where the concrete and mud farm is going to go. And let's hop off and I'll kind of show you an aerial view. So I really like the view from it on this side uh, because you can see the walls that on the other side and the little peaks of smoke or smoke peaks, I guess, smoke stack, smoke. And <laughs> so you can tell that I really want to see the inside just from the huge glass walls in the front. I want to be able to see the entire redstone contraption from the front. And so I decided to go with a, oh, oh man. I decided to go with a big glass windows for the front side. And then on the walls, you can kind of see from the inside there. Um, pretty simple stuff. I still wanted a window or, or two, but um, I decided to go with a more uh, basic design with the calcite. And I really like the way the calcite looks with the brick and stuff. And then jungle wood and the blue, I think this color scheme looks a lot better than that. I still like this, but in vanilla, if I, or not vanilla, if I turned off the shaders, this compared to this uh, looks incredibly boring because this is like three different block types. While this is like six, almost just uh, with all of the different colors and all that stuff. So I really love the way that this looks. I think I might tear out this uh, little hill as well because I want to be able to see this. And then the back side has nothing <laughs> i might put windows in but i felt like it was a little bit excessive and i think this looks okay too i'll probably put some stuff in the back anyways um but yeah that's that little guy and then um like i said i'll probably tear out this part of the terrain if you see it from up here you'll kind of understand if we were to put a pathway up to the the queen knight statue thing um i can tear out this whole chunk here and still have a pretty good pathway up to it and then that will also help us be able to see the side of the factory a little better from this little pathway over to here so i went ahead and built the whole thing uh you can see it here it's a pretty big little system and this is why i chose to do the windows look at this like little view once this ground's a little higher you can just kind of see it and while you're walking by and you get curious and like oh what's that and well, I know what it is but <laughs> you get the point you'll come in here and then this behemoth of a machine um just kind of takes up this entire space and that's what i wanted it to do that's why i built i honestly built this and then built the factory around it um so there's a lot of empty space which i'm going to use for storage later but um i went and built this whole thing instead of doing it piece by piece because i did try to uh walk through each little component um while i was building it and it just it would have been it would have been an incredibly long video so i'm going to do my best here to kind of show you guys how this all works you guys are probably thinking that this is a little extravagant for just a little mud and concrete farm and you're absolutely right this thing is it could definitely be simplified but i wanted to test some stuff um and i used some cool uh mechanics in the game that i thought were fun so i thought it'd be more enjoyable to build it this way than super efficient and uh, i probably could have put it all in one line but this is this is pretty cool i think i think it looks really awesome and it kind of adds another eye catcher to the world this is a block separator and it is run by this little note block here and it works by um, detecting what changes in this note block uh, occur depending on the block that's underneath of it so initially this is going to be obnoxious i think i have it all disconnected so nothing should happen but initially um the note if you get real close you can hear it that's the air tone the air tone and the dirt tone are exactly the same oops i didn't mean to do that um, so initially what's going to happen is the air tone and the dirt tone are the same, right? So this block will just continue to get pushed all the way through, uh, without activating this uh, little block pusher. However, if I were to put this here, you can see it get pushed. Um, this is a different tone than the dirt and the air. So it changes direction. Um, and a really good way to show you how this is going to work is if I put it all back and I'll put that there and how I'm going to have all these things, uh, shooting into my inventory is this uh, dispenser. And because dispensers are random, um, I'll get a different block type every single time. So that's why there's like random colors and blocks and uh, stuff going into this machine. And I want it to be like that. I could have this all be dirt if I wanted just mud, or I could have it all be one certain type of concrete if I wanted it to be concrete. 
But every time I place a block, it shoots out another block and it gets right into my inventory in the same spot. That way, um, I'm not only uh, choosing one block, it kind of randomizes it, which is pretty cool because I want to see this little variation of blocks versus concrete, but I have a lot of dirt in here, so it's mostly mud. Oops. If we go into F5 here, um, we'll kind of see a... Oh, let me get the angle right first before we go over there. Um, if I go to F5 one more time, um, we'll see how this uh, block separator works. So I'll just kind of hold down, right click a couple times, and eventually... <laughs> okay, now I have brown concrete powder, so it'll go in, so it's right there. And then I'll do the next one, and you see it get pushed over this way. Um, that does create an air gap right there, but because air and dirt are the same note, it really doesn't affect anything. So if I come back over here, place the next one, and... There we go. So we saw that dirt get all the pushed all the way through. The gray concrete is not here now. So um, that's how it works. That's how the hill system is kind of running um, to get these blocks all the way down into the splash chamber. And I don't want to do too much because I don't. I want to show you guys the TNT light off. And this is a really fast. If I were to hold right click down, it's super quick. So I needed to have piston pushers that were also. Uh, I think actually they are a lot faster than this one. These are zero tick. So it works by having redstone torch that updates this redstone block. Um, which updates this block and this piston at the same time, which creates like, I'm not exactly sure what the, the name for it is, but it creates a zero tick pull. So this pin piston pushes instantly so that um, we don't have any clogs anywhere. So that also works right here so that this can go down at this exact right time and um, doesn't get pushed all the way through. And so the next part of this whole system is Il Mango's uh, mud farm. And I'm going to link a video or link his video with um, a time slot, hopefully, uh, where he goes over how this works and i'm gonna try my best uh but it's really complicated and i recommend checking out his video if you really want to know how this works but it basically works by having a drop or a dispenser here which shoots a water bottle into the dirt which converts it to mud and then um we have a dropper chain here i'm gonna try not to mess anything up a dropper chain uh on the back side here that go all the way up that shoot into that and then there's like these block detectors here and it's a, it's a whole system. We have a mangrove root there because we want it to be um, uh, waterlogged rather than uh, having something to block the water in because we don't have a whole lot of room. And I'm going to sleep real quick. So that system is uh, created by Il Mango. He has a world download. And that's how I kind of uh, was able to build this block for block and make it work. And if you do decide to build uh, Il Mango's uh, mud farm here, uh, I do recommend trying to test it out on certain Y levels and X coordinates because I built this all one block higher and it didn't work. So I lowered it and now it works. So <laughs> it was incredibly annoying to try to figure out why this whole system wasn't working because I built it six different times in my creative world and I just, I could not figure out what was going on. But then I figured out that it was like a, uh, it, it depends on the, like where it is in the chunk and the Y level and the X level. And there's just, there's so much to it. So I recommend, recommend building this first if you decide to build his version of the mud farm. And so we have these zero tick pistons here because we want these to be moving quick because this is a very fast uh, system. So we have two of these zero tick pistons moving in the corners that convert it into this one straight line. This observer is going just into this redstone line uh, that pushes this piston down. And it this was the only way I could figure out how to make it work at the same time freq time sequence <laughs> as these other zero tick pistons because um, if this observ observer is here, it pushes this down. And if there's ever a block that's stuck right here and I'm pushing this way and then I'm pushing this way, there's a gap and this allows it to be all pushed down at the same time. That's probably really confusing. It was a really confusing problem to try to solve, but um, I hope I did a good job explaining that. Uh, but once we get all of these blocks pushed down to this spot, we head on down here and we have a ton of these zero tick pistons um, pushing these around in a loop. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on right here, so I'll kind of show it right here. This is in all the corners. The zero tick, these little guys are on all the corners and it's pushing it into a square. There's probably a better way to do this. I wanted it to be a square because I think it looks pretty cool, but I could probably build a piston wall that pushes them all out a single direction rather than build a circular wall or a square wall. Um, but we get around all the way around. It goes here, goes across, gets pushed back, and then we get to this point where we get to here. There's an observer that detects when the last piston or when the last block reaches the end. 
and it activates this little signal that goes, uh, it's like a, I think this is a monostable circuit, so that it only pushes once rather than twice, because the observer will detect when the block reaches it and when the piston goes down, uh, when the piston retracts it or goes down or... It, it, it sends two pulses, so we really only want one pulse. So this is just a sticky piston with a block on top, and there's like a height variation between the observer and that, so that it creates a block that stays in the air. Um, so it initially will turn this line on once, and then when it retracts again, it goes down, and there wasn't a second pulse that gets sent. So that way, these all get pushed down at the same time, um, and it only happens once so that there's no uh, weird glitches when... When this whole thing's running at the same time, very fast speed, if it pushes down twice, some of these pistons lock up and it just creates a problem. So I had to solve that problem by doing that little thing. And so this also is connected to a, um, I honestly have no idea what this is. I'm going to say it's a counter. Basically, it works by using a dropper with a hopper that's facing in uh, towards it. Uh, with the comparator here and then the comparator on the hopper that's in subtract mode so that it only sends a signal um, once this leaves and we get all the blocks from here and here. It'll send a pulse uh, over here into this little uh, redstone tower, which go all the way across to, it's just redstone, all the way across into a dispenser with TNT. It's centered right in the middle there, and then it just drops down, blows up, and um, goes into our chest over here. So I've only run through it once. Uh, we'll do a quick test run. It is really loud, so um, I have the sounds down pretty pretty low so it might be a little quiet well it'll be loud still but it'll be pretty quiet so i'll show you how fast this goes if i'm just holding right click down so it's pretty quick i have to make sure that everything is timed perfectly otherwise oh i heard the tnt let's go check it out run yeah so perfect and then um uh oh looks like i need to add um like another layer of <laughs> obsidian because it looks like some blocks are getting stuck but that's okay uh, that was just more of a, I just built this room really quick so we could kind of see visually what's going on. But yeah, so we come on down here and then if all the blocks were to go into the, 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 the water, it would go down here and it honestly collects a lot. Um, this little system works really well and like surprisingly well. I, I thought it'd be kind of efficient, but it's, it's very efficient. So I think I'm actually going to expand this, um, one more block out. And then I think I'm going to have a water collection system at the bottom that sends it into a bubble tower, which then sends it all the way back up to the top, uh, somewhere over here, maybe just in this little area, because there's a lot of open space, which I'm hoping I can make a pretty interior, but interiors are kind of my kryptonite right now. There's a one thing I haven't worked on or even practiced working on since I've started playing Minecraft. <laughs> so, um, it's probably going to be pretty ugly for a while, but yeah, this is the mud farm and I can definitely uh say that this is probably not what you guys expected <laughs> um it's huge i really probably i really probably i really could have simplified it i bet if i had the staircase over this and then just had it one single line and i tried to do that but i i found this block separator and i tried to find um some type of uh farm that i could incorporate it and i thought why not just do the two blocks that use water but create different sounds and so on. So I really like it. Um, there's definitely some room to grow uh, with my knowledge of how piston tapes work and all that stuff. But I think it'll be a really nice thing to have in our world, especially since mud is becoming very popular uh, in the building world. And I take a lot of inspiration from like Reddit and Pinterest and other YouTubers and stuff. And mud or mud bricks, I guess, are probably the more popular block right now and then bamboo is coming soon so yeah having this in the world is going to be super nice uh there's some stuff i still need to work on but i think that's i think it's pretty cool at the time of recording this outro 1.20 is actually out already um right now i'm waiting on some of the performance mods i use um a lot of them to uh update so that i can actually record with shaders and um well i guess record and use shaders at the same time without it being super choppy so I'm going to wait a little bit uh, for those to update, and then we'll probably put out another video of us exploring the 1.20 update. Um, there's a lot of stuff I want to add. I think I'm going to replace these flowers, or at least some of these blocks, with the cherry blossom trees so we can get that leaf effect that I was talking about last time. That wasn't introduced yet uh, when, I, when I was making this tree, so I'm, I'm actually super excited to have those little petals start falling down and i won't even have to do the well maybe i still do I, was, I might still add some of the dispenser stuff i was talking about in the last episode and i think the next episode will probably be um more building around the 
uh, villager farm. I think I want to try to get more villagers um, maxed out, if that makes sense, and have a ton of houses dedicated to them. So I'm thinking about moving some of the library villagers down to my um, enchanting area down here. Yeah, right down here. I think it'd be kind of fun to have just a ton of villagers roaming around in here, especially the more valuable ones. I'll have to uh, make it so that they can't leave this area. I'm not really sure how to do that yet. Maybe I'll add a uh, carpet with fences underneath. Anyways, um, I'm going to add some villagers or put some of the villagers down here and then make more homes for them up here. Oh, it's raining. <laughs> so I'm going to add more homes here. I think that's probably going to be the next episode. Bamboo is coming out. Now we have mud blocks and I think that that really fits the aesthetic. Bamboo and mud and the jungle wood and all the stuff I'm already using. I think it'll look really good in this area. So if we start to add more houses, add more... Um, why is this open? Add more houses and interiors for these guys that are more specific to each little guy. I think that'd be pretty fun. So we'll, we'll work on that next episode and I, we'll do a little bit of exploring as well. But yeah, I think that's probably going to be it for this episode. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this build. Uh, it was a lot of fun to make and I honestly am a big fan of this, this style. And I think I'm learning a lot the more I challenge myself. So I'm going to continue to maybe try to make some, some fun little crazy builds and just see what happens. And any ideas you guys have for this area, I would love to hear them. I, I think that'll be a cool little working station area. So adding like um, maybe some massive barrels or like some machinery that has like old fashioned type of look to it, I guess. I don't actually know. I don't know what you would consider it or how you would describe those kind of machines but just old looking machines that are moving blocks around that kind of fit the aesthetic but yeah that's that's going to be all for today thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one